Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 19th, 2018. First off, let me get some uh, business out of the way here. Uh, this is a wise cam that was sent to me by my friend Mike R. And I was not able to get it to work with my equipment. Uh, it does not work with a computer directly. You have to do some hacking to get it to work with a computer. It's made to work with a phone app. And my phone, unfortunately, is so old. It's a LG Ultimate 2, which was... I think it came out mid-2014, so it's kind of like a dinosaur. And I looked on the support forum, and especially the older LG phones that you can't update to a newer Android operating system are not very compatible with these computers. So I had a little problem. I could get it kind of operating, but it would have the splash screen come up in the center. It was kind of a green ball, and it would just uh, not go away. And according to the support forums, they are probably because people that have phones like that so old or just there's not enough of them to be worth the uh, bother to do it they're not going to go back and correct that kind of a problem so I talked to Mike and he said I could send it on to my friend Muzzle Mike with his equipment he's working on putting up some cameras in his area for his house and he's uh, he's got the kind of equipment he's got newer equipment than mine and he's got an Android tablet now I happen to have an Android tablet too but it's a Kindle so it's a proprietary tablet so without doing some hacking there I can't really get it to work easily on my stuff and it would be so much easier for him and I've seen in the past from what uh, my friend Mike R has shown me that this camera is capable of doing quite well instead of what I got out of it it was very low resolution very blocky but uh, like I said that's just because of my equipment so I'm sending it on to him and then Muzzle Mike can do a review and we'll probably have part of it on here and part of it on his ITL report uh, sometime in the future when I get it sent to him and the other thing I sent on I sent a version of this. You guys have seen my headlamp, the quantum headlamp that I talked about in my other TDD report. I sent one to the UK to my friend Gerald and he is going to, uh, I will put a, a link to his video and at the end of the TDD report I will put a little bit of the uh, unboxing and the opening and his preliminary review and then if he gets a chance I asked him to test it out for a few weeks or a few months and then send me a long-term review what he thinks about it. I've been using mine for several months now and I love it. Uh, the only thing is I would say for people, if you want a real wide area bright lighting, it's probably not for you. It's more focused into an area, although you do, you catch enough side light to be useful. It's just not going to really brightly light areas way out to the far side. But if you're interested in a, con a concentrated light that you can focus even into a smaller concentrated area and adjust it up and down, I'm still very happy with it. And they lowered the price. I got this for, uh, the one that I bought for me was $13.99, and the one I bought for Jer was $9.99. And they seem to run it on sale quite often at Harbor Freight. You get that quantum headlamp at Harbor Freight. So let's go on to the two articles that I have for this week. First up is from allthatsinteresting.com. Scientists are one big step away from bringing back the extinct Tasmanian tiger. I've talked about bringing back the mammoth before and they even talk about this they've got some preserved pups from the Tasmanian tiger in jars here and so um, thylacines is what they were called uh, the different animals there were other animals that were similar and they were native to Australia Tasmania and New Guinea they were, they were New Guinea they were the largest modern carnivorous marsupial and contained distinct features structured like a dog stripes on the lower back and a pouch like a kangaroo so they were the marsupial version of what the dog species would be so in December of 2017, Pask and a team of scientists at the University of Melbourne used 13 Tasmanian tiger pups of joeys, preserved now called to sequence the entire genome of the extinct species. Uh, they said they will attempt to use this advanced technology to put genes from a thylacine in the genome of a living related animal. Uh, that's the problem though, because they even say in here there's there are uh, there are no really close real living related animals, so I don't know how they're going to overcome that. Uh, problem. In fact, two paragraphs down they say the lack of living thylacine relatives presents the biggest obstacle. So until you can bring another one back to, to carry it, I don't I don't know what they're going to do. I, I don't know if they can get a modern day dog to carry it or something like that. But uh, And it talks about the woolly mammoth in the article there. In contrast to current attempts to resurrect the extinct woolly mammoth, which has many living relatives, the elephants as a matter of fact, Tasmanian tigers were much more unique creatures with genetic makeup vastly different from any living animals. So, uh, seems to me like uh, they better go with the easy route first and although it's been talked about I think since I was a teenager in high school they first talked about the bringing back the mammoth they still haven't done it it would be kinda nice um, they're even talking about the possibility of maybe using some of the gene sequencing and just creating an animal that's very similar to the Tasmanian tiger but not maybe exactly 
and then sometimes you can do some tricks with interbreeding and crossbreeding to to bring back all the characteristics of the Tasmanian tiger. They they've done that with other animals in the past. Can it be done with this? I don't know. And this is one of two articles. I'm going to save the other one for uh, next week or the week after. But this was sent from my friend Chris P from Gibraltar, who also is going to be sending me a Gibraltar flag. Thank you, Chris. Sailing ships back in vogue as green alternative to conventional shipping. Now I've done an article before about conventional cargo ships that use sails to cut down on fuel usage but this is actually using old style sailing ships although one of these is a more modern ship so uh, one of the world's oldest methods of transporting goods is making an unlikely comeback sailing ships which kept the British Empire and tea sugar and tobacco are back in vogue as green alternatives to conventional shipping restaurants such as Noma in Denmark and Echo Chief Tom Hunt's Poco which has branches in B Bristol and London sell wine that arrived under sail uh, the ex now this is not as cost effective yet as regular cargo ships because they just can't carry a heck of a lot. I think they can only carry like the one cargo ship can only carry like about five tons, but uh, it only adds uh, about like I said three percent to the price. So a nine dollar bottle of wine it would add about thirty uh, cents to the cost. Of. It says one of the ships T O W T use use is Greyhound. Oh, the, one of the ships the company uses is Greyhound, a lugger which was built by British couple Freya and Marcus Pomeroy Roden in 2011 and can carry five tons of cargo. Now I'm thinking too, if, if they only charge a 30% surcharge and people are really into, I know a lot of people are into environmental stuff too and they would rather pay the extra 30 cents to a, for a more environmentally friendly way of delivery. Um, if they would just make these ships maybe just big enough to carry 15 tons of cargo instead. So, um, and the other ship that um, company uses was built in 1873 which makes her the oldest cargo vessel still sailing in the newest business to be developed. Although wind is free, the labor intensive nature of the industry means goods imported under sale will always be more expensive. And then it talks about a six euro bottle of wine is uh, the, the charge of delivery is about 30 cents. So I kind of approximated that out to be um, something like a 3%. Maybe I'm wrong with it, but it's um, I thought that was about what it was. And they say here, it is way cheaper in the long run if you calculate the people who don't die because of lung disease caused by emissions and the possibilities of reducing climate change. What I'm thinking more is the fact of if fuel prices jump back up again too. Now we've had fuel prices drop back to a more reasonable level, but I don't know how long that's going to last for too until fuel prices start going like crazy again too. It may be uh, fuel prices you know, go up 30% or maybe double or something like that. Uh, these kind of wind-powered cargo vessels may be the way to go even if you have to wait a few extra days for your goods just to they might might become the cheaper alternative so anyway that's about it for this week after this I will have like I said just a little bit of Jer's video of the opening of the quantum headlamp for you guys to uh, um, take a look at and uh, I would appreciate I will have the link down below to all the articles and the Jer's opening and preliminary review video. I'll go and check it out if you possibly can too because I'm just going to show a portion of it so he can get the view of the full video for those that are interested. So take care everybody. I will catch you next week. Ah, good morning. It's, uh, today is the 15th of May and I've received this uh, package which is a head torch from Chuck in uh, USA uh, <laughs> cost more to send it would you believe than the thing cost anyway same as I sent Sunny the other day to my daughter it costs a lot of money to send That's postage for you, I suppose. They don't do it for free. Okay. That's the packaging opening. Open.